So we are in this in our Lenten series, and it's called Life in the Wilderness. And what we're thinking about is wilderness, but not in the. I, there's a lot of us here who love wilderness. I love wilderness, um, but that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is um, wilderness can be scary. I went hiking uh, alone for 10 miles one time, and then I got a little spooked in the middle of it. And so the wilderness times of our lives are those times uh, of kind of where we're unsettled, we're feeling vulnerable, uh, maybe scared, maybe just nervous, maybe anxious, something like that. Something like being in the woods alone at night kind of thing. Only these kind of situations crop up inside of us. And uh, so... It's, the wilderness is an uncultivated, inhospitable region. It's in, in the context we're using it, it's somewhere you don't want to stay uh, or go to, really. You don't want to be stuck in the wilderness. You might go there with a plan, but you don't want to be stuck there. And uh, so this is where we're going. We're going to look at all these stories. Adam and Eve, Abraham, Isaac, uh, the Israelites, Elijah, John the Baptist, Jesus himself, and Peter all experience different kinds of this inside, this internal wilderness that happens in our lives. Last week, we talked about Adam and Eve and the wilderness of not knowing. They knew that there was other things that they didn't know, and Satan tempted them with that one thing, and maybe the only temptation that Adam and Eve, who were, after all, living in joy and paradise, maybe the only temptation to which they were really open, which is, what are you missing out on? What is being kept from you? What's over there? You'll never know unless you try. That's where we went last week. That's the kind of uh, wilderness. Is that, and we all kind of have that pull sometimes. This week, it's a little different. It's Abraham, and he is going into an unknown space. But it's an unknown space he sort of needs to go into. God has told him to go into this space. He's, he said uh, he's living over in Haran which is quite a distance from the land of Canaan. And uh, God has told him to pack up everything and start going. And he'll tell him when to stop because he wants to show him something. But he doesn't tell him where it's going to be. He doesn't give him a map. He doesn't tell him, here's where you're going to stop. He just says, start going. And I'll guide you. And that's kind of wildernessy to me. I don't know about you, but I, if I'm starting a trip, I like to know where I'm going. If I'm going to be doing something, I'd like to know what it's going to be and the end result, uh, how it's going to play out. And so when, when God called Abraham to do this sort of cloudy, kind of just go and I'll tell you, that's kind of a wilderness to me. And that's the wilderness we're going to explore today is when, you, when, uh, when there's areas that you need to move into that the outcome is uncertain. And they could be all, all sorts of things, but I'm going to give you a little graphic. So the wilderness we're looking at today, last time it was that cloudiness of, oh, what don't I know? Here, it's the idea that you have to move towards something. Abraham had to go, in. God called Abraham to go into wherever, and you tell him when he got there. And so we're going to look at things that we have to kind of move toward. And there are things, and, and this can be anything like, it could be really, very localized time-wise. It could be like a single conversation. Have you ever had to have a conversation with somebody and you weren't sure how it was going to go because it was not an easy conversation, but you knew you had to have a conversation? Well, in that instance, you, that's kind of wilderness I'm talking about. You have to move into something where you don't know the outcome is going to be. But it's worse if you don't move. And so what we're talking about today is we're going to look at how we can have as great a comfort as we can moving into those wilderness spaces, whether it's a, a little conversation. It might be a surgery you don't know the outcome of. Uh, that's kind of an unknown space that you have to move into. It might even be like Abram. It might actually be moving. I know one family who decided that God was uh, uh, inviting them to move to Ecuador for a year and live in an orphanage and help them. And uh, I never felt that particular call. I felt a call to become a pastor, and here I am. Look at me now. Um, <laughs> so so that, that's where we're going. We're, we're, so you I can't even tell you what your it is, but there are things in everybody's lives that are that kind of moving into the unknown space that you know you've got to go toward 
but you're not sure how it's going to come out. And, and so you've got some anxiety, some worry, some uh, you know, uh, discomfort maybe with it or whatever. And so that's where we're going. Uh, and Paul wrote to the Corinthians. We can't, we can't get around this, by the way. This is the thing that we've got to just come to grips with, is, is we are called to a life of faith. And a life of faith is going to mean moving into things where you don't know the outcome. Paul told the Corinthian Christians, you walk by faith, not by sight. He told them later, when we talk about the hope of Christ, he says, who hopes for what he has? Who hopes for what he's holding in his hand? We hope our hope is based in the, this future kind of thing going on. And so so we're, that's what we're going to look at, is, is how we walk into these places. Uh, where it's uncomfortable, whether it's a conversation uh, or, um, or or dissolving a business or uh, moving or, or whatever it is. You pick your it today. This is like a custom sermon just for you. You get to pick your own it. Whatever you see it, whatever you see it, you put your it in there. And uh, I promise I won't put your it up on the screen. Uh, so... The thing that we have to take notice of, and the thing that we need to be reminded of, the core truth, is that when you go toward it, whether it's the little conversation or the surgery or the big move or whatever it is that you feel like you're being drawn toward that you don't want to avoid, because the consequences of avoiding are even worse than moving toward it. Whatever that it is, you're not alone. That's what the scriptures say. You're not alone as you move toward it, whatever it is. God is with you in that time. And I want to give you uh, four truths, four truths that you need to embrace. Four truths that you need to embrace when you sense the it coming. Uh, you may not have an it right now. You may have had an it. You may still have an it yet that's going to pop up later today. Who knows? But I want to give you four things whenever you have that uncomfortable thing you have to move toward that you're not sure how it's going to turn out. So these four things. The first thing to remember is that you don't really know what's going to happen. You don't really know what's going to happen. Uh, the Bible reaffirms this in many places. Ecclesiastes 8, verse 7 uh, is talking about man. He doesn't know what is to be or who can tell it how it will be. So whatever this it is, one of the things we do is we play that movie. And you know what's funny? It's been like 50 years since anybody's made a movie like this. <laughs> but everybody knows what this is, right? <laughs> so we, what happens is when we're faced with an it, for some of us, and different of us have different things where, where uh, we've got our growth area. For some of us, our mind starts playing that movie forward, and it goes to all sorts of crazy places. And, we're, and we, and we kind of get worked up to where we're almost sure this particular thing is going to happen. It's almost like a future is cast in concrete. The truth is you don't know what's going to happen. Whatever that it is, however you picture that turning out, that may not be the way it turns out. Proverbs Solomon reminds us, many are the plans of a man, but it's the purpose of the Lord that will stand. So the first truth to keep in mind as you're facing that it is whatever that it is, You've got a, a picture in your head of what that's going to look like, how that's probably going to turn out, but you don't really know. And lots of times the picture that we paint is a picture that doesn't include the influence of God in the situation. And so we need to remember that God is part of this whole thing. God, uh, God knows your words before you speak them. He knows your steps before you take them. He is uh, he's involved. God is involved. In fact, that's the second thing that we need to remember. One is, you don't really know what's going to happen, so don't get overly like wrapped up in your picture of the possible future. Number two is, whatever this it is, God is walking with you toward it. God is walking with you toward your it. You don't have to face it alone. Jesus, before he left uh, bodily, uh, told his disciples, Behold, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So Jesus is with us as we face our it. We can't actually predict the it, the outcome of it. And we know that as we walk toward it, 
Jesus is walking with us. That's two. Number three is whatever you imagine this it thing to be, or however you imagine it to come out, uh, which you don't really know, and you might make your plans, but God's going to determine how things go. The scriptures remind us, and we, this is a pretty popular verse with very good reason, God promises that he's always at work, causing things to work for good for you. When you follow God, he promises he is at work as you're moving toward the uncomfortable it, the painful it, the anxiety-producing it, God promises that He is at work in the middle of that thing, as painful as it might be. We know, Paul writes for the Romans, that for all those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to His purpose. And this is, a, this is not a little thing. This is not like, one way or another, you'll get a Diet Coke this afternoon, because God's working that out for good. This is, this is the largest sort of existential way you can think of it. Because if you, if you try to put this in a little box, you're going to start to say things like, I don't see it. Where is it? God said it's going to work for good. And it's been 30 minutes. <laughs> so this is a huge thing. In fact, let me tell you how huge it is. When Paul was writing about this idea that God in the end is working everything for good, and that as he moves toward Paul, by the way, you know, he was beaten and all this thrown off of this and and ended up a martyr. So he had some very big hits to face. So Paul's idea of what it really means to face your it in faith was this. And it's pretty extreme, but you know, it's Paul. Paul's an interesting guy. He says, oh, am I missing it? Oh, okay, well, I'm going to give it to you now. I'll go back. I'm not going to keep you in suspense. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. How about that? For, uh, for looking at the idea of God working everything and in everything for good, that's, the, that's like the extreme case, right? Even if I die, I'm with the Lord. So he has worked it for good. He's always working everything for good. That's number three. He's promised that uh, he's always at work, working everything for good. So, uh, number one, you don't really know what's going to happen with that it that you're facing. Number two, God is with you in that it. Jesus has promised he never leaves us. Number three, God has promised that he's always at work for good. So as you move toward the it, you can have anxiety and fear and worry. The one thing you can't do is say, this thing is going to overthrow God's work in my life. Because that's not going to happen. It, there's a lot of evil in the world, and a lot of bad things, and a lot of difficult things, and some things that we just have to face into, some things we've done to our own lives that we have to face into too. But the one thing we know is that God does not say, hey, that's out of my hands. Shoot. So, number four. So that's really kind of what faith is. This, this, from this from, from what we're looking at today in terms of life in the wilderness, that's kind of the definition of faith. Faith is moving into the unknown at God's direction, trusting God with the outcome. Moving into that unknown gift at God's direction, trusting God with the outcome. And it could be as big as a move. It could be as big as a move. It could be as little as a conversation. Here's what uh, uh, Solomon wrote in Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your soul. This doesn't mean thinking is hard. Don't think about things. It doesn't mean don't consider things. It doesn't mean don't plan. It means in the end, leave it in God's hands. Do your best, and then trust God to do the rest. I just made that up on the phone. <laughs> do the best, let God do the rest. Um, and, and in the end, don't try and second guess God. This little phrase in the middle here, be not, be not wise in your own eyes, that's what God had to leave in trouble, right? They had a clear instruction that had a very good reason behind it at that tree. Don't, you, listen, you don't want to go toward the knowledge of good and evil. It's a bad place. You've got good 
And I know you think you don't know good until you know evil, but you've already got good, and I'm telling you, you know good, even though you don't know evil. And they just decided that they needed to experience it themselves. And uh, dumb pile on Adam and Eve when we get to heaven. Uh, so be not wise. So, so trust God, move forward in His direction, and then, and then leave, leave it in God's hands. That, that's the way this works. What's your it? What's your it? Whatever it is, you don't really know how it's going to turn out. You, you think you know, and, and there's a certain degree of, of surety in different kinds of it's, but you don't really know. So, God is walking with you toward the it. And he promises that however that happens to turn out, he's at work for good. And, and, and that's why this arrow is not filled in. It's semi-transparent. Because that's the way it is. And that's what we've got to come to grips with. Because that's the nature of faith. Faith is moving forward in God's way, trusting God to be at work, even when, when we don't know how. So, so think about, I mean, the, the, easiest, one, the easiest one, I don't know the easiest one to contemplate, but the easiest one to conceptualize is the idea of something move where you really, you really feel like God's calling you to go go to both foods like my friends or, or whatever. So that's kind of a wilderness and God calls us to move toward it and we can trust that God is walking with us and he's guiding us and he's working it for good. But there's a lot of times God has a call on our life that is, is more of a um, it's a general, it's the call to live as a Christian. It's, it's not the individual tug on the heart although many of us have experienced that in different ways. But everybody has the call of love. Everybody has the call of love. And so when you are, uh, when, for instance, when love demands, when love demands a particular kind of a conversation, that's not going to be easy. Uh, it's not going to be clean or pleasant, and you're not sure how it's going to come out. It might be with your spouse. It might be with your mom or dad or your son or daughter. It might be with a coworker, but something serious has to be talked about, and you're not sure how it's going to come out. That's where this kind of wilderness is, and in this kind of wilderness, where you're where you're moving toward that thing, that's where you're trusting God in the wilderness. Because the one thing you know, even though we do it anyways, the one thing you know is avoiding that conversation altogether doesn't help anything. It doesn't move your life forward. It doesn't move anything forward. Resolution or anything. So when you're thinking about this conversation, perhaps, that you have to have, remember that you, how many of you ever played a conversation out in your head, planned it out? <coughs> well, you don't agree. Some of us do that. When we have a hard conversation, we think ahead, and we imagine what we will say, and then we imagine what they will say, and what we will say, and what they will say, and, and it, uh, it kind of goes off. And, and often that is not going off in a good direction. So we have to remember the truth. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how the conversation is going to go. And you know, as often as not, when you move into a conversation with a good intent, that it goes to a better place than you thought. It goes to a better place than you thought. So you need to remember, as you're facing into those, you know what you're called to do. You're called to be loving toward this person. You're not called to know the future. You're just called to move toward that person in love. And you don't really know what's going to happen. You know that as you move into that conversation, God is walking with you. Pray before you have the conversation, just to remind yourself that God is walking with you and to bring that calm in your spirit that God is walking with you so that you don't kind of mess things up in your own anxiety, right? Which many of us have done at times. And remember that... No and the third thing is, and this is important is that remember that God is going to work in and through that. It may not go well at all, but God is still working. Even if it goes, even if the whole thing crashes and burns, God is still working. There's no place, there's no outcome in which God is not working. And so faith demands that we have those conversations with God. But... And this kind of this this works for those um, 
not only for things like conversation and stuff, it also works for looming events like surgeries and things like that. That's a kind of a, a, a moving towards something uh, where you don't know how it's going to come out either. This, this four things apply, and they're in your bulletin, so you'll have them forever. Is again, you think you know what's going to happen, but you don't really know what's going to happen. Ask a doctor. Ask a doctor if they know what's going to happen after surgery. And the only thing they're going to give you is percentages. Because you don't really know what's going to happen. I went there and the cancer was gone. I've heard that. Not very often, but I've heard it. You don't really know what's going to happen. God is walking with you into that surgery, into that difficult event that you have to deal with in your life. And God promises that he's working that for the good. And so that is really faith, what God calls us to live by faith. It is the call to be willing to move toward the uncomfortable wilderness of the unknown that is directed by God, whether or not it's our hearts, or whether or not it's the call to live in love toward other people. And God empowers us to do that by reminding us that you don't really know what's going to happen. He's walking with you and he's working with you. Let's pray. Father, we all have it in our lives. For some of us, we have a big looming it right now. For some of us, the moment I said, you know what it is, inside, some people said, oh yes, I do. And for some of us, we don't have a big thing we're facing into right now uh, that's kind of a wilderness where we, we process this worry or anxiety. But either way, Father, we, just, we want to ask you to empower us to live by faith so that when we're faced with it, whether or not it's your individual tug on our hearts to do uh, something that you're calling us to do, or whether or not it's simply the, what love demands of us in a given situation, that we can remember that even though our imagination works forward, that we don't actually know what's going to happen. And that you are with us, and that you promise we're here to put that. Cement that in our minds. So, I can't leave you without some questions. Uh, what might it be for you? There's places to write this on your little thing if you're the kind of person who likes to take a little notes. The sermon handout is in there. What might it be for you? What is hard for you to face into that you know is God's will? That's a, what is hard for you to move toward face into that you know is God's will? Number two, which of these Bible verses that we read, they're all printed in uh, your bulletin, the sermon handout again. Which of those verses would it be especially beneficial to you to commit to memory this week? Maybe glance through them all and circle one and say, yeah, you know what? I think I better, this would be good to have in my brain all the time. And number three, uh, do you need to make the choice of faith and face directly into something this week? Are you one of those people who when I said it, you have, you're like, oh yeah, I know exactly what it is for me today. Do you need to choose to just, based on what we've read, say, you know what, I'm just going to turn and walk forward. Is there something you need to do that for?